Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of podcast, Not Quite Strangers. My name is Valerie Hope. I am your host. And this is an opportunity to get to know two people, not only by you all watching them, but they also get to know each other too, because they're strangers. Uh, and the whole purpose is really for us to you know, activate our curiosity, be inspired by curiosity, uh, shift our perspective, perhaps, on different things, different opinions, different lo ways of, of looking at life, and then ultimately establish a connection with one another. And that's, in essence, the purpose of this podcast. I would love for you all to subscribe. If you're not already subscribing or following, like us, favorite us, save it in any particular podcast platform that you use, and that way you don't miss a single episode. And now for the piece de resistance, I have here two fantastic guests. And I'm going to start by introducing Andy, Andy Thomas. Andy, you and I go back to, gosh, July, July 2022, because your wife hosted a workshop. I guess the two of you hosted because it was in your home. So the two of you hosted a workshop in your home of some really phenomenal personal and professional development tools called Site K. And, and you were the, the, the model, you were like the showcase <laughs> model throughout the workshop because, you know, Catherine, your wife would keep, keep bringing you up and you would participate by showing us how something is done, or you'd share an example of something that you'd uh, experienced. You and I also got to practice a few things together. And so I, I really appreciated how interested and interesting and enthusiastic you were in that workshop. But then I ran into you at Costco. This is not a promotion for Costco. <laughs> I ran into you. And I remember I recognized you, but I couldn't place the face. I just thought, I know this guy. Where do I know this guy? And something compelled me to just stop and ask. And you and I had this really fantastic conversation and you share a lot of the work that you've done in, in transforming yourself and some of the things that I already knew about you. And I thought, oh my gosh, Andy, it would be so cool for you to be on my podcast because you just have so much to share. So thank you for saying yes, Andy. Well, thank you for the kind intro and uh, happy new year to you and to Tommy. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't remember when I last saw you prior to the Costco uh, uh, interaction but again you know for those that are you know hearing the buzzword of site k please get back with valerie hope on on if if any of the discussion about this interests you she's been trained in all of it so um this is this podcast is not for that but <laughs> if it does interest you please get back with valerie and uh, she can get with you on the, how to pursue the this modality further but yeah thank you for for um i guess the kind words and um uh, i guess you know site k is just part of my life and you know i when i ran into you at costco i was like huh i wonder if there was a message for both of us in this so mm. obviously there was because yeah. you ended up taking the next level of training and mm -hmm. and now i'm on my very first uh podcast <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's how it works. I just followed my intuition in that moment. So very good. And I will make sure to put information around um, the course and your, you know, your wife's website and all that good stuff so that people can access that. We might even talk about some stuff here because this man over here, Tommy McDowell, is no stranger to personal development and transformation. Tommy, you and I go back a lot longer. I would say 2016. Yeah, yeah, 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. Yeah, right. <laughs> several years. And the way you and I got acquainted is through workshops as well, personal development yeah. workshops. We were doing yeah. some things with Landmark Worldwide. Yeah. And in fact, you were my coach for one of the workshops. Oh, that's right. I remember right. that. I, I was thinking how we first met and the role. I didn't know if we were in the same class or what, but... Yeah, sort of were in the same class. We roles. were, but you were my coach. Yeah, you yeah. coached me I for, yeah, I don't remember right. how many months, three months, four months or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we had many, yeah. many yeah. interactions. And then we developed a friendship and we connect yeah. after that often. And yeah. you and I, I just, one of the things I appreciate about you is just how 
deep we go in our conversations, you are so committed to also not only developing other people like you did through that coaching experience, but also yourself. And you've shared with me some of the things that you've been out to transform and to look at in life and you challenge yourself. And um, it seems that the, the more you progress in life, the deeper you go. And I thought, um, oh, Tommy would be amazing to have this conversation with, and then also to introduce the two to each other. So Tommy, thanks for saying yes. No, thank you. I, and look, I, I remember the one thing that I walked away from, from meeting you was your voice. And it wasn't the sound or tone. It was the depth and almost the power in your voice, right? You just got it. And so it doesn't surprise me you're doing this <laughs> <laughs> or, or anything else along the way where your word and your voice create and move people because you just oh. you just do it naturally in oh. a very beautiful way. So that, that definitely is a gift. Well, I appreciate that. And I want to use this gift today to make sure that the two of you walk away, at least sharing, if nothing else, a bit about yourself with each other and anyone that's been listening. Um, the first question I have for you is, and I always ask my guests this question, beyond the fact that I invited you, right? I extended an invitation. Right. Why did you say yes to being on a podcast to meet a stranger? Like, what do you hope to get from it? Or what is it that had you to say, yeah, sure, why not? You know, I think it's um, it's a couple of things. First, it's it's that point of transformation that always goes right. It never it never ends. It seems like it, there's always a new chapter or a new ending story or something. And what's coming up for me right now that I need in my life is community. I, I need my tribe. I need my deep friends. I uh, recently read another book uh, about being connected, and it was how historically we place so much importance on that significant romantic other as the relationship and we sort of minimize everything else and yet it doesn't have to be that way <laughs> and throughout history many cultures it isn't that way and so when you start to sort of reawaken maybe some of this from covid maybe some of this from working remote through the computer all the time you know, you start to realize what's really missing in your world, and that's connection with others deeply. Yeah. So it was like the teacher comes when you're ready. And so you showed up <laughs> with this and new friends and new place, and it was just perfectly aligned. Oh, nice. Connection and community. Love that. Yeah. What about you, Andy? Besides our Costco moment, <laughs> what was it that inspired you? Well, I... I thought about it and I said, you know, I've never done a podcast and other than, you know, the famous ones that are, you know, have millions and millions of followers. And I said, hmm, you know, she's asking, why not? And so I didn't build any kind of expectations into it until after I started hearing like some of this stuff, like some people can get nervous or jittery or, and I'm like, huh. And so as I started hearing more and more of that, a little bit of that started maybe creeping in. But then I go, huh, you know, because I was like you said, I, like I said, I was crossing my fingers at all the audio and the microphone because, you know, you know, my wife does this online, too. Mm. She, I'm sure she has the same types of, of possible scenarios on her Zoom stuff that you do with your podcast. And I said, you know. And Catherine's never, I don't think, she, if, if I remember correctly, she's never done one either. Mm. I'm thinking, you know, if, if Valerie needs, you know, a way to get some of this information out to the world, why not help her out? And, and oh. so I'm like, you know, and I don't, I don't really, my tribe is mostly all the students from, you know, Catherine's classes. And mm. so it's not like I really have a personal relationship. I just... I, I know of the students, but I don't really have uh, outside of that, like Tommy was saying that, you know, sometimes you just need to see uh, what kind of tribe uh, you vibrate to. Mm. Sounds like, you know, between the three of us, uh, there is a tribe out there that, that fits, you know, uh, the needs for all of us. Yeah. I, you know, this is interesting because this is, this has become a bit of a tribe for me. I, I do usually know the people that I invite, you know, like the, I know the two of you, they usually don't know each other or don't know each other very well. Um, 
so I think that's part of it is just kind of continuing to build those connections that if nothing else, you know, beyond this moment of the three of us together, you guys might connect, right, on a different level. Um, but then I want to go back to something else that you mentioned about not having expectations until you started hearing that well, maybe people get nervous or people have some thoughts about stuff. And I think what I've also found is when we meet someone in a store or we meet someone in a class or we meet something in the, someone in the workplace, we might also have expectations or choose not to have expectations, but then something happens in the moment. And I think I approach this what this podcast in the same way. I've had people whose dogs barking. I've had people who freeze on the glitch on the screen, whose audio goes out. And I, I find myself rather than having this like manufactured experience, because when we meet people in real life, we don't, we don't have the manufactured experience. It just, I mean, we could probably put something on and like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. How are you? Happy New Year. Like we could say those kind of things, but the experience, if it's raining, it's raining. <laughs> if, you know what I mean? Um, sure. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I wonder. So I'm curious for, for you to, um, when you do connect with someone or when you're out looking for a community or when you're, you know, you meet with somebody and you think, hey, this might be a person I want to continue to have conversation with. Like what draws you to a person? What draws you to a situation in which you would like just, hey, let, let me get to know this individual? Wow, I'll, I'll take that one. That's a that's a really good question. Um, I think it's just there's a sense of openness to connect, you know, is the first thing. I mean, How people do you know are in that? their own conversation or their heads in their phone mm. or something like that. But if they're approachable, whatever that word means. From the time you see them and you walk up to them, I don't think it's really anybody in, in mind. It's just, are they open to me? Do they meet eye contact with you? Do they even turn their body to you? Uh, you know, so those kind of cues are probably the first ones I pick up on. And then, you know, within a few conversations, you just know through your voice, is this someone that wants to talk to you or not, you know? And um, so that's, that's, probably, that's probably the first thing I noticed there. Okay. Yeah. Andy, what about you? Uh, I would I would probably agree with what Tommy said. I think for me, though, personally, I'm I'm I am a kinesthetic person, so I I I kind of feel off of other people's energy. Mm. And if I kind of, you know, through 26 years of of, or not quite 26 years, but over 20 years with Psyche, you just develop things or a skill set that either this person's either a good fit or maybe not a good fit and you might you know stay away but I would never you know let anybody know that but it, for me it's just it's an I, I'm, I, I pick up people's energy and even through the computer you know I, I can yeah. still sense mm -hmm. the energy mm -hmm. yeah. No, Andy, I was thinking the same thing. It's like I work a lot remote, so I'm always online working. And even when there's not video and there's voice, at the end of the day, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's because I feel through the computer. You know what I mean? I pick up stress, difficulty, whatever. Mm. I pick up everything just like I would be if I was right there. And it's a little hard to let go of it. You know what I mean? When you've been zoned in like this so long, listening to conversation and words and language and mm -hmm. not being with the person. So maybe you overcompensate a little bit in some of those areas, trying to understand where they are and what's happening and how to communicate. So it tends to, it, it tends to suck me in a little more that I have to go release at the end of the day a little bit more than maybe I did years ago when we were doing everything in person. Well, I think the two of you are talking about this energy exchange that happens, whether we're in person or virtually, there's there's this yeah. energy exchange. And I guess the thought that comes to mind is sometimes we give energy and it goes into like this black hole <laughs> with the other person or the other side is just yeah. like sucking yeah. all that energy yeah. in and we yeah. end up depleted. And sometimes yeah. there's an exchange of energy, right? So both... Yeah parties yeah. are actually giving and taking simultaneously yeah. and it doesn't feel as depleting that's yeah. that's what comes to mind huh yeah maybe. um what questions do you guys have for each other because you've already talked a little bit 
um, in preparation for, for the actual interview, but I'm curious about what's come up for you guys since you started this conversation. Well, since Tommy went first on, the, on that last piece, I'll go first on this one. Uh, the, one of the questions that I had uh, for Tommy, um, is it Tommy or Tom? Do you have a preference? You know, whatever comes out the quickest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I just actually, don't want to offend you. Quick story. Some people, yeah. <laughs> actually, it, it's Tommy. My middle name is Lee. But in Louisiana, somebody forgot to put the space between my first name and my last name. So on my birth certificate, it's Tommy Lee. One word. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> All right. So my my first question that I have for you is, and this may be more of a philosophical one, but since we are strangers to each other, are you more religious or are you more spiritual or are you both? And if you're if you're one or the other, was there a time frame in your life that one kind of overtook or was more more presence in your life than it is now? That's a very, very good question. I would say I'm definitely more spiritual. Okay. Um, I use the religious word to be something around more of a structured social gathering, I guess, a set of beliefs. And um, I'm, I'm really not in that camp. I've been there before in my life. And if there was one event, it was that comes really clear to mind. I was probably in, I don't know, maybe elementary school, fifth grade, sixth grade. Oh, the church we went to, my, my dad had built that church. And this was back, uh, you know, a long time ago. <laughs> and it was a Baptist church. And one of the things the Baptists believed back then was this priesthood of the believer. There was no single denomination called Baptist. Every church had their own sort of belief structure, you know, and they took part in the Southern Baptist Convention for, you know, for, for materials and things like this, but there was no one doctrine. Well, that started to change. <laughs> and, and I remember, I, I, I grew up in that church. The, the people there were my family. I mean, they were my brothers. I mean, it, it, that's all I knew. We were there Sunday, Wednesday night, holidays. I mean, that was it. And then to see new preacher come in, new philosophy, people get angry with each other, people leave, all the disruption that went with that was like, I couldn't believe it. I, I was like, how, how can anybody this do, do this to a family? Hmm. And then it was, it just took me down that road. Well, what are you talking about? And why do I have to believe it this way? And all that kind of thing. And that, I think that was the first step that broke me from that and said, you know, this doesn't sound like the message I was hearing, <laughs> you know, so I think that was part of it, and I think it was just, it was a realization, too, of growing up in the 60s, where, and I remember this distinctly, you know, being in the, the, uh, the, the social movements at the time, and, and like, uh, you know, I, I, in the church and friends, the, the racial undertones were there, and yet, when I went into church, we sang a different song, you know? Hmm. And in my house, my mother, it didn't exist. But all around me, it was there. And it was like, I just, there's something, another one of those things that made me want to go, something's not right with this picture. You know, it's either this church structure and the social structure ain't following what we've been saying we believe in. And it just doesn't seem true to me. So I think it was a combination of those things at a deep sort of family area that I started to pull back and see through a different lens and started to pull back from identity. I mean, I think that was the beginning of not being identified with any kind of formal religion or family or social structure that way. Okay. Probably had a lot to do with it. And on the spiritual part of it, what, what part of it, was it a modality? Was it some of the landmark training or how did I think that it was, a, was an evolution. I think it was an evolution of, of being present of having a few miracles in your life, like well, where the heck did that come from? Or how did I get through that? Mm -hmm. uh, or things just show up like, you know, you didn't have anything to do with this. And it's those kind of movements that just sort of awaken you along. And I don't think there was, I think one builds on the other. I think Landmark was really good about, you know, getting very strong at where your identity was, you know, uh, in yourself and in a group, you know, so, and be able to feel that out. That was a big one. Because 
most of us guys, Andy, you're probably the same way. You're raised to be something. You know, sure. you got to grow up to be this. You got to be that. And every job I had, everything I did from military on, I wore it because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. And somewhere down the road, you get a little older and you realize, I can't keep this energy up. I'm none of those things. Right. Not sure I even know who I am or what I am. And so I think it was then you start this, this journey, this search to seek more. Right. And that's where the spirituality starts to develop. And it's an ongoing journey. It never ends. I have a very similar road. So yeah, it resonates with your story with very similar wow. how I, you know, I I played out myself. So that's wow. kind of why I asked because mm. I like yourself, I, I grew up very in a um religiously. Um my my mom's side was was Baptist, but my dad's side were Church of Christ. Mm. And so, you know, Church of Christ people, we can't do anything. At least Baptist people can have musical instruments in their church. <laughs> but uh, you know, growing up, I, I just started questioning it, and and you know, yeah. deacons and your elders would always tell you to go back to this verse in the Bible. Well, I was so young that I none of that just kind of made sense to me. But I, I recognized the fact that as I got older, and I actually uh, meeting my wife is my pivotal point as to when I became more spiritual because I was so dogmatic in my religion they they didn't they didn't mention things like uh conscious mind and the subconscious mind so I wasn't exposed to any of that right. and it was either you know hell hell down damnation from either you know each of the religion and I just questioned it and as I got older and I got introduced to my wife, my wife really was very pivotal in me finding my uh, spiritual journey. Wow. Wow. It's so interesting. It's, and it's funny how I was thinking about this day, just in prep for this too, Valerie, just this thing of transformation, it is ongoing. And, you know, and I think another pivotal moment of that was I married and my, and my wife's uh, father was a PhD theology doctor, biblically knowledgeable. I love this guy. He's brilliant. So we got back in the church in San Antonio for a while. And I just really, you know, I just I just never been one to fit into that dogma. <laughs> it's so funny. I tell the story at, at the time I was working as a federal, federal federal probation officer. And so I handled a lot of white collar criminals and things like this. And so we would, you know, we'd have to go out and see our people in the street, right? So I'd go do that. And I tell everybody, you know where I saw my people? Sunday morning in church. I'd go right there. I'd say, see that guy over there, the deacon? He's getting indicted next week. That one over there? What? Kind of cocaine coming in on back. All the time. And that was it. And I'm going to the most religious places I know are prisons. Everybody's got Jesus in prison. <laughs> you know? So it's like, it just, it was just this kind of thing that hit me in my head, like, Huh. something here's not right for me you know, it's like it just doesn't add up and um and so it was, it was really probably like you it was it was just through others and landmark where people started being honest to being vulnerable i mean that's what i would love to hear just be real with me yeah you know just tell me you deal with the same thing i deal with just being you know, it doesn't go away and to be that vulnerable and say here's what i struggle with every day mm. making sense of that and in that kind of opening to me that's where the the, the relationship starts to really deepen something happens in those spaces i love i love this conversation right now because um one i remember reading a book called the wisdom hunter have you guys either of you heard of mm -hmm. that wisdom mm -hmm. hunter i can't remember the, the name of the author but the the book was about this man who was um it was a true story uh, based on a true story this man who was a, a pastor at this mega church and but you know, he was building the church and it was huge, but his family was falling apart. Mm -hmm. And he came to a crossroads where it became choose, <laughs> choose your adventure. Are you going to be focused on building this church and the notoriety and the, the your name in this church? Or are you going to rebuild your family? So, um, and it was one of those books that was introduced to me by someone that I went to church with, because I also had a fairly structured religious upbringing. You know, we used to go to the Salvation Army, which is a church, very um kind of the bent would be like a methodist style uh i would say um faith 
But I remember going faithfully and I was involved in all the things. I was a Sunday school teacher. I was in the choir. I was, I mean, I did all the things. And there was a point in time I read this book and I had an interaction. Um, one particular Sunday where I had all these interactions and Tommy, you were talking about vulnerability and being real, where I was just like, I didn't see what I saw and experienced with people didn't feel like the community saw and felt from the people. Mm. Like there was some right. distinction between how we are with each other versus how we are at church. Yeah. And I was like, why is that? And, and after yeah. having been in all these different spaces within the church, I was just like, I don't think this fits me anymore. Hmm. Yeah. And I just stopped. I, <laughs> I went cold Turkey from going to church after decades um and i've now found myself you know another i've I've evolved uh, which brings me to my next question is i'm curious about we've alluded to landmark um, worldwide site k for example people li listening might have no clue what they are um and without getting into the nitty-gritty of it per, per se but maybe talk a little bit about what inspired the two of you to start seeking out that type of education that type of transformation um, in your lives. Okay, I'll go first again. Uh, for me, it wasn't really a choice. I mean, yes, I, I had a choice, but my wife, because she was so spiritually path driven, at, at some point early in our, our relationship, for her to, for me to stay being you know, very strict Church of Christ every Sunday, every Wednesday, becoming a deacon myself and all that. And, you know, making sure that I could remember, memorize all the verses of the Hebrew uh, King James version mm. or go down this other path that it, it really sparked my interest because the way I met my wife was uh, she also dated at that, that, that time pre psyche was um she did uh numerology and so she she did my numbers and and numbers kind of resonated with me and so here i am meeting this this woo woo spiritual you know female person i ended up marrying to you know okay you know uh, everybody that's not part of your religion all, all the rest of them are gonna go to hell even the Baptists, the Methodists, the Catholics. So I, I said, I have a problem with that. My religion cannot be the only one that if you don't belong to it, you're safe. So yeah. I, I, I ended up just going, you know, going towards my wife's path. And the more I got down into it, I'm like, huh, this really resonates with me. So, I mean, you know, 20 years of it, uh, you know, we try to, eat, sleep, and drink this spirituality path. Now, again, I never want to poo-poo the, the religious side because we, as a human um, species, we need to believe in something. And if that religious gives you your structure that you need, go for it. I, I just think that there's room for both paths mm. and you just got to find the one that resonates within yourself mm. and the spirituality path here for the last 20 uh, years has really resonated with me. And, uh, but I still, I, even, even for a guy and I find this in most of the spirituality realm, it's the guys that are lagging. We're the most hardcore, uh, you know, we're stuck in our ways <laughs> you women like yourself, Valerie, you guys rule the world. The guys, a lot of the guys just haven't caught on that females rule the world. But I get it. And, um, you know, you you guys that, that are in that spiritual path, you're way, way, way ahead of the guys. But in, mm. in fairness, uh, I think we're starting to catch up. So mm. There's more of us now attending these types of workshops than yeah. ever before. You know, I see you over there nodding here. What's what's going through your well, head? About no, it? no, it, it it makes I've had that same thought. And one of the questions I was going to ask you is is I, I go back and look at the the way my dad was and what a man was and what masculinity was and the role they had. It wasn't just him; it was everybody's age group. My dad were the same way, 
they were basically all World War II vets, and uh, you know they dealt with what they dealt with there. But I, I just look at the way they their view of the world was in the family and in the community, uh, the way they were with us kids, and it's like I've never I could never be that way, <laughs> you know. I could have never. Now my dad was was extremely physically abusive. He'd be in jail living today, absolutely. And so there was that element of it, but, but, but it was, it was broader than just him. It was a lot of men there. And it's like, I look at where I am today and it's like, I, I don't think I fit on this planet. <laughs> and so yeah. what led me to the transformation is that use this search for me, you know, and it's just a constant ongoing kind of learning, unpacking, exploring, you know, experience. But my question for you would be, yeah, where where do you see what's it like to be a man today mm. in the role you play versus 30 years ago, 40 years ago? And any, and like you said, you're opening up, but is there anything that comes to mind that helped that thing change other than <laughs> getting older and not having as much testosterone? That's probably the only thing you can say. Right. <laughs> You know, that's, that's like you said, that question is probably still always ongoing for me. It's always a learning process, but if, if I had to like, am, I'm just so grateful that I was able to do a different path because I believe that my life for the last 30 years, is just every year it seems like it's gotten better and better and better mm. and so i think it's because some of the work like you like you said you have to do your own work first yeah you know it, it, you, it starts within yourself yeah. and i did a lot of that work many 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 years ago and in hindsight i sometimes year after year i reflect and i i, I look back on that and I'm, I'm just so grateful that that I've done some of this work that, that I'm involved in because I, I believe, and I may have mentioned this to Valerie, if I had not have done that, I really think I, I probably would have manifested something nasty health-wise. Yeah. Health-wise? Yeah, mm. I really do. I, I think that because of some of my anger, some of my resentment, some of my shame, some of my... You know, we all have skeletons in the closet that we never talk about, but we have them. Mm. And there's ways, there are tools out there without talk therapy that can handle some of those skeletons. And I believe that if you get rid of some of that shame, guilt, and forgiveness, it just takes the weight off your shoulder and it allows you to become who you want to become, whatever that is. Yeah. Well, I think that's part of the key. If you if you grew up in environments like that where you weren't allowed to do that, right? As a guy, you weren't allowed to do that. You had to do this, this way, whatever. Then that you never got developed. Right. And then as you start to unpack some of those things through a lot of what you mentioned, that question for who am I then starts to come forth, you know? And you spend time trying to figure that out or find that or where it is about you and this. And it just, I don't know about you, Andy, but it just, it seems like it, it, it's ongoing. I mean, I'm, I'm at a different stage of life now where I'm still trying to find out what it is. I do not want to be, I, I can't, I'm not the traditional 67 year old white guy on the planet. Right. You know, I just, I just, that's not me, it's not my energy. It's not me. Uh, I don't want anything to do with that. And so it's a constant kind of sort of, I, I get explorations to, the way i mean you, you learn practices along the way like many of you have to help you open you up and listen to that um but it, it's an ongoing an ongoing journey sure absolutely at least it is for me so can you guys give an example so i'm first of all just so fascinated by this idea that you, you know this the maleness that's coming up right the <laughs> the how you all now see yourselves in, in the context of a male society and how the identity that you were born to, to, to move towards. So I'm curious about what is it like to be you now with other men? 
like in that, like in a random interaction, you're someplace, not maybe there are not people in your tribe per se, they're in your circle, immediate circle that may have gone through some of the same things that you were talking about now. But when you meet other, other men, what is it like for you all to be in community with them or in communion with them? Well, for me, just like this, this podcast here, I feel like I can be really honest with Tommy. Hmm. And he's not going to sit there and judge me because, oh, well, you do that. And most males that I know don't do that. Yeah. I don't get that from Tommy. I, that's why I, I know that I've changed because now I can have these serious conversations with guys. Hmm. And there's no, there's no uh, expectation of you're going to judge me for what I'm saying to you. Also, like you don't care anymore. Is that what you're well, saying? Well, it's not that I don't care. It's just that I've done my own work, uh-huh. and I just I'm very comfortable in where I am right now. Is there still more uh, growth opportunities? Absolutely, uh-huh. but I've come a long ways from where I was to where I am today, and now I can speak to other male uh, guys comfortably and say, "Hey, no." I'm not as religious um, as I I used to be. I'm more of this now. And so that kind of can can spark a conversation. Oh, yeah, well, what what are you into now? And I don't have to feel like, you know, uh, stepping on uh, eggshells to, I can now say Psyche or the landmark or or anything in the spiritual realm Mm. without, you know, fear of being judged. Yeah. Can you give an example, like something that happened in a moment in time where you had a conversation, an interaction, how you reacted in the past and how you react now? Oh, sure. Like my best friend, he's a, he's a, he's a surgeon. He's a, he's a orthopedic surgeon in Georgia. And we grew up elementary, junior high, high school. We went to different colleges but we've known each other since grade school all the way up to high school. He's still my best friend, but I can, I can, he's still in that Baptist uh, role. His whole family is still very Baptist. I don't like, I don't even curse around him. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But when I'm around my wife, I, I feel more comfortable and I, I feel more comfortable, you know, cursing in front of Tommy. So I don't do that in front of my, my best friend because he's still, you know, he's still in that structure. And, and I understand that in his role, uh, he may have to feel like he can't be as uh, open as, uh, as maybe like he has to be because he's a doctor. Uh, mm. And maybe I, that's just an expectation that I kind of have in my head, but I do feel like some people feel like, depending on what kind of um, role model you are, you, you mm. sometimes have to fit that role or that mm. model. And, uh, and you know, like I said, maybe maybe more balancing on my part that someday I'll be able to say, you know, shit to him. To my <laughs> my, my, my Beep. We'll have to beep that out. No, oh, I'm, kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's but the that's next podcast. Right? That's, the next <laughs> one. <laughs> that's interesting. So even with your best friend, knowing, having known each other for so long, and he's still having that role in your life, you find that you, you shift how you communicate to make sure. it comfortable for him. Absolutely. Have you had that conversation with him about this? Well, so some of it was uh, during the COVID. Uh, there was, you know, depending on without, you know, getting into any of that politics of stuff. For him to keep, because he is the uh, the senior partner of his uh, medical, so he's high up there in his um, profession. But he had during COVID, if you wanted to keep your two million dollar salary you had to follow the protocol. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if all your doctors, all your nurses and all your staff had to get the jab, even though some of them might be saying, "Uh uh-oh, you know, now in hindsight, 
you know, it would be nice if we had a choice, but he, for him to keep his millions, and I'm not saying that that's why he's doing it. I'm just saying that he has a, a white collar profession. He has a certain role model. And I do feel like he has felt stuck during a certain, during the COVID period. And he did some things that I know if we were talking personally, he probably would have maybe changed some of his mind. Hmm. So the but, freedom of expression is is not as prevalent because of the role he has, sure. the job he has. Okay, I get that. Huh. And Tommy, what about for you? I don't even remember. What was the question? I don't remember what the question was. I got so like <laughs> I, in, I, I engrossed I in your word, story. I remember the direction. <laughs> okay. Build uh, on it's that. How men, you know, it's how other men respond to you, you know, when you're when you're working there. And you know, everybody looks at it through their through their own lens. I think most people will end up opening up to me, you know, and I think most men are on a journey themselves. Mm. Most, not all. And then there's others that will like at work. Um, you know, they'll they'll throw in me, they'll throw me to the most difficult human situation on the planet because it's like, ah, Tommy will figure that out. Throw him in there. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like, oh yeah, he can schmooze anybody. I mean, I've heard it put that language, you know, schmooze anybody. And I'm going, I'm just talking. That's all I know. <laughs> it's like, so they they tend to they tend to put it wherever they are on their journey with their language, they fit you in that box. Mm. Or they don't really know where it fit me, which is probably most of the time, right? Uh, but I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of deeply connected guys, you know what I mean? Some, but not. Not really, um, you know, some along the way, but not many. Uh, but it, but it is Valerie. It 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 is a journey. I see more and more men opening it. You know, I see my son and his generation. He's now twenty four. They get this by default. Yeah. I mean, it's like they just they just get it, and uh, they don't seem to have that kind of identity built in like a lot of the other people do. That you know, that sort of have that glue that keeps them stuck for one mm. place in time. You know. And, mm -hmm. and so I, I think it's, it's, it's still an ongoing process, but, um, I, I can see the guys that are stuck there and, you know, and if, if I get good time, I'll, you know, that we'll have a heart to heart conversation like this, you yeah. know, and, and they're sort of, they're sort of awakened by it. I think they see a glimpse of it, whether or not they can express it. I don't know. The thing about it is, it's just like landmark Valerie. It's like when you change that drastically, a lot of the people around you, and key relationships related to you as that mm -hmm. right and all of a sudden you're not that anymore yeah and so it can be it can be stressful mm. you know how to how to move through you know your 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 so-called landscape you built around you you know into yeah. something else it can be very lonely there sometimes too you gotta <laughs> you go know. find more and create more so to speak I don't know. Like I said, I don't have it all figured out. I'm still, I'm still going the process. down. I think yeah. you mentioned that this is, you know, what, what is factory installed in the generations now was something that was an upgrade that we needed, right? For, for the oh, yeah. older generations. And I remember you saying this to me and it stuck with me, Tommy, you mentioned a few years ago, you talked about how, because you worked in technology or you work in technology quite a bit. And you were talking about how we have, as a human race, been so committed to evolving our technology. There are constant upgrades. I mean, there's a there's a five, six, seven of the phone, like within weeks sometimes, right? We continuously upgrade, but the human mind doesn't get upgraded as intentionally right. as our technology does. Right. Just ironic. Um, right. Yeah, and and I remember for me, one of the things you know, you were just talking about how with our family or, or, you know, people around us, how they relate to us. I remember when I did a lot of the stuff that drew me to, to landmark was, was first of all, a friend of mine who knew that I was always into like personal development and like, you love taking classes. So you might really enjoy this. And I was like, sure. But secretly I had like a crush on him. <laughs> I was like, whatever he said, I would have been like, uh -huh, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, I'm just as guilty of that. <laughs> That's how I got it. For influence, <laughs> influence. But um, and I remember I I went through the course, and one of the first things, like the first day, because I was thinking, oh, this is gonna bring us together because we're gonna have this shared experience. He's done the class, and I'll have done the class. 
the very first day, one of the first things they asked us was where in our life do we have a relationship where we're not being authentic? Uh, I was like, Ooh. Okay. and we had to write a letter to the person <laughs> with whom we're not being authentic and kind of just spill our guts. And, um, as I thought about it and man, I, I tried avoiding it, but it was really him that I was being inauthentic right. with. And spe specifically because I was doing so much to try to please him, to really yeah. adapt to him because I really, you know, I'd fallen in love with him basically. And uh, so I had to write this letter <laughs> and in the letter and I'll just share it here because why not? We're among friends. Yeah, so I remember, <laughs> right. I remember in the letter saying something to the effect that, um, you know, as your best friend, which I considered him at the time, you know, our best friend, you know, um, I've been pretending that that we're fun and fine and you're really cool friends, but really I'm in love with you. And the challenge is that if you, because he had talked, he was not interested in me that way, he'd made that extremely clear. And there are times when I was like, Ugh, but I'm like, I'm going to hang in there though. He might change his mind. <laughs> but I remember, um, and I wrote in the letter how, if you were to meet the woman of your dreams, right, and, and find the relationship of your dreams, instead of being your friend and being supportive and excited for you, I would be jealous and hurt. And I'm like, what kind of friendship is that? That doesn't work. And, I, and we just had to do this as an exercise, right? Just write it all out. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is painful to just even look at. Ugh. So the next day in the class, we had to share with the partner the letter, and I did. And the person next to me, she was like, oh my gosh, are you going to share this with him? I'm like, I will die first. No, we'll never share this. And then she asked me a really small question. She's like, I wonder how many other relationships in your life this has happened or where you've had this experience. And I was just like, mm, yeah, never. oh my gosh, there's a pattern. And I had this flashback. I was like seven years old. My mom and dad were not the kind of they had known each other for years but they weren't like best friends like they didn't really have that connection and i remember deciding when i was seven that i was going to marry my best friend that's mm -hmm. it and so any man who became my best friend had a target on his back <laughs> he's mm -hmm. the one and i was like oh it's not even him it's me <laughs> oh my gosh and then i couldn't wait to get a hold of him and share with him which I eventually did. I shared, I literally read the letter to him. I typed it up in an email actually and sent it and he didn't get back to me for three days, but I was like, it's a big deal. Take your time. <laughs> but when I finally connected with him, I remember for the first time in the years he and I had known each other, I could just be with him. I wasn't calculating what to say, what not to say. Oh, would this sound good? No, I shouldn't say that. Like I wasn't always playing this game and manipulating my mind to adapt to whatever he was doing. And I just felt like, oh, this is what authenticity is. Whoa. And, you know, we still remained friends, but now from a distance, it's so much more respectful, but I, ah, and he's married, happily married. And I'm so happy for him, excited that he found someone. And it was just like, that was not me <laughs> 10 years ago. Uh, well, that, but in the letter, you fessed up that, that it was you instead of yeah, exactly instead yeah. of saying uh asking for a friend yes exactly no this is no asking for this is like this is me <laughs> yeah but the question i have for both of you is why does it have to be one or the other why can't there be a hundred shades of gray in there i mean yeah. why do i have to why can't i just really be deeply connected and love someone doesn't mean i have to be married to them true doesn't mean i have to have intimate relations with them sexually yeah but why can't I still be close like that to a larger number of people mm. in a new way, you know, instead of just either this one or that one or this one, you know what I mean? That that's to me, the space is to explore is why can't I just love this person because of who they are. Mm. And it just, that's it. I mean, it's not a, not a sexual attraction thing. It's nothing like that. It's not that I want to be married. You got that, but why can't you, you know? And I'm like going, I think you can you know, just like you were there. I mean, it was yeah. it was there. It didn't have to go that way. So I'm like, I don't know if there's one place to explore and relating to others. I think that's it. It's how can, just, can we become more open and connected to people that way without it having to fall in one or two buckets, you know? I, I want to say this one thing. I think I would put a little label on it. And then Andy, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I think what I learned from that experience, especially after he and I reconnected and had the conversation about it, um, what I had the appreciation for in the moment 
was his unconditional love for me. His unconditional love for me helped him remain a friend, knowing that I had romantic feelings and aspirations. And he never once took advantage of that. He never once pulled away and he didn't play cool or he was just present and open and very respectful and saying, no, not for me, Valerie, but I love you. And I think I learned a huge lesson in that moment about unconditional love and that it could look like a deep connection. It could be respectful. It doesn't have to be sexual. It doesn't have to be marriage. It doesn't have to be dating. None of that. But it's been a struggle even now thinking about like, how do we express that in relationships with other people who haven't the same orientation or, or education, you know? Mm. And yeah, so that's kind of where I'm kind of still feeling it out. But Andy, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think I can semi-relate only because, and this may be something uh, along the lines of that book, uh, Men Are From Mars and mm. Women Venus or whatever. Um, yeah. Because even now, I've been married to my wife for 26 years. She still has a bunch of her guy friends. Yeah. But me, I was in contact through Facebook on a couple of the girlfriends that I dated. And it is like, no way, dude. <laughs> you are not going to have a connection with. So from I think from a female's perspective, and hopefully Valerie can just say, no, you're wrong. Yeah. Women can have male friends with that. Mm. No expectations of yeah. uh, sexual or whatever, but it's not the other way around. Like us guys mm-hmm. getting back in touch with ex-girlfriends, that's just a no-no. <laughs> and, and, and part of it, it, it played out for me because I did have a girlfriend that I dated back when I was like 16 or 17. We parted ways until we reconnected somewhere uh, maybe 10 years ago through Facebook. But for me, I had relived back when I was 16 and I was showing expressions as if I Mm. had not uh, changed from that 16 year old mentality and my wife picked up on it. And so that's where I think I still have some development on my end that Mm. it's just not a, it's not a two way street for both guys and girls to, to, See, I'm I, just the opposite. I can do that. And okay. it's unfortunate because a lot of the women will take it the wrong way. <laughs> the other thing is being, they, I want to be connected. And it's like, no, that's not where I'm going. <laughs> I'm trying to be a human here. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm still you? still developing and growing in that aspect. Yeah, no, I hear you oh. right there. One thing you said, though, Valerie, let me jump to it. Andy, get your thoughts right. on this, too, was... That, that there's in my, in my, I spend too much time by myself thinking, but <laughs> <laughs> one thing you reminded me of something I've been thinking of lately is, is it, the good thing about Landmark was so good was you learn to see people, you know, I mean, to really be seen was so important, not my role, mm-hmm. not my job, but really see me mm-hmm. and how much that affected the connection, you know what I mean? So to be able to see people and be seen it takes two to do that you know Mm -hmm. you can't do one without the other but the other side of that that i've always struggled with and it made me think was is to be safe and to me that safety is exactly what you just said is when that kid comes to you and they said dad i screwed up and the first thing you say is hey i love you we'll work through this it's that kind of safe is how do you create that kind of safe that you're going to be there with people regardless of where that is and I have a friend you know really close to and she used to she used to say that she used to say being safe was a big word to her and at the time I would, Andy I was the guy thing going what do you mean safe there's no war going oh no he's gonna beat you up what are you talking about what do you mean you're not safe <laughs> it's like I didn't realize it but that was the safety you know to be in that spot and it's almost like go back to religion that's becoming my sort of holy trinity in a way mm. and maybe that's what it was really supposed to be is to be seen be comforted and then have that thing of safe not being judged of being present mm. it's a beautiful thing to put together if you can try to express that in some way so i think that's what that guy was doing there with you mm. you know was he was allowing that safety 
for you to say that and be with it, you know, without judging you for it or putting yeah. you down for it. Yeah. And allowing that to happen. I think that's, that's anyway, that's where my that's brain goes. Profound. And, you know, I think I would say in general, men and women do have a different perspective on safety. What, what is safety, right? Kind of like what you alluded to. Um, but I do, it's funny because, you know, Andy, you were asking about, well, how, you know, women could have these relationships with men that have like the non-sexual friendship connected. But <laughs> Tommy, you're like, nope, that's not true because I try it and that's not the case. So I wonder, I'm not sure if this is right or not, but I wonder if it has to do with the, in, the individual completion of the relationship. Right. Meaning I, when I had that, when I read that letter and I had the conversation, I had to have a conversation to really complete it, to like, just kind of look, here's in the open, here's what's happening to me. And it just kind of squashed all the other extra stuff. It just became very pure. But I've done the same thing since with my ex-husband. I, I did a lot of cleaning up there and, and hey, here are some places in the relationship where I was being inauthentic. This is why or why not, whatever. Um, so just completing that I've done it. So I, I still have those deep connected relationships with my exes. Um, mm -hmm. I've only had like two really big ones in my life, but those were, those I think helped me and also helped them go like, okay, she's safe. I'm not trying to get my claws back in or any of that. Right. Cause I, I've done the inner work to just kind of thank them. And I think the, the key for me is if I can get to a place where I'm grateful for having met the person, like this is why you mm -hmm. came into my life. This is the purpose that you've served in my soul. And I can articulate that and just have gratitude and unconditional love. And it's just like, okay. You know, not that I don't miss some of the aspects of the relationship that were really intimate or whatever, but it was just like, oh, that's why you were here. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That I think helps. I don't know. What your thoughts on that? Makes sense to me. No, I like it. And my question would be is, where do you go when you don't get to do that? Either that other <laughs> person's not present or they're not that far in their journey to have that completion yeah. with you. Where do you, where do you go with that? Mm. You're right. That completion is so important. Yeah. I mean, it really is. I think you write a letter. I think having some, some, there has to be some externalizing. It can't just be a thought. I imagine yeah. having some sort of letter or talking to someone about what you would say, having that yeah. person be like the surrogate for that individual. There has to be some sort of externalization of it. That's my thought. And then I think the other piece is, I, I remember when I was going uh, to therapy, my therapist says there's two lessons that everyone should also be, be really present to. One is that we do not exceed the level of emotional development of our family until we leave them, until we leave their home. You're going to be in the same exact level of emotional development. And he said, number two, you will always attract someone at the same level of emotional development as you are <laughs> in any given moment. And I was like, what? My accent, not -uh. And he's like, yeah, you might not, you know, it may not look the same way, but you guys are right there. So I think um, anything that we can do to elevate, evolve our emotional development helps us see something different, even different in a person that doesn't do their work. So I don't, those are, that's my opinion. Yeah. Thoughts? I, I like it. I, <laughs> we talked a lot about a, a lot of stuff and we probably could do a podcast on a lot of the stuff we just mentioned, but yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I, we're all we're all unique individuals and it's just very tough to say it's got to go this way or that way yeah without knowing the the history and the story of each individual but i do think that as we evolve and and that's you know through our own work we all can come together like this mechanism here yeah. And we can sit there and, and agree with, yeah, you know, that story sounds familiar too. And mm. uh, we all can just say, you know, this was our solution. And so, you know, yeah, I, we're all evolving. Constantly. Ah, and on that note, as we're evolving towards the end of our conversation together. Um, Ready? Already, I know. It's just, we got deep go. quick. <laughs> I'm curious about what was it like to be in, in a podcast, having a conversation with a stranger for the two of you? I enjoyed it. I, I 
in fact, I, you know, if this is the, my first time doing it, this is how most first timers, I would say, well, why wouldn't anybody want to do this? <laughs> so, yeah. You know, and, and you made it easy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean the, the technical and being on camera, I've, I've done all that would work, but the thing that I didn't know how it would work and I questioned it in my mind until I've done it is can you really connect with people like this? You know what I mean? Can I really connect like I can if I'm in person? And you can. Yep. You know? hmm. At what point did you realize that, Tommy? Today. <laughs> <laughs> was there a this moment in the session in our conversation that no, you had? You're like, it was oh. just, it's just somewhere along the way, you know? I can't think of any particular moment. Okay. It's not like angels saying, oh, this is there. <laughs> They, they never sound that way to me. They, no? they, they okay. make a sound, but that's not it. <laughs> uh, well, I am I'm really grateful for all the things that you all shared. And I can imagine some of the conversation may have provoked some thought and maybe even challenged some people as they were listening to it. So um, I'd love for the two of you to maybe, for those that are listening and been tuning into this, what would you challenge them or invite them to do as a result of the conversation that we've had today? If you could give them one thing to work on or one thing to, to, to invite them to do, what would that be? I think from my perspective, I would just encourage, you know, if any of this resonates with some of your listeners, uh, to get back with you because, it, you know, you're, you're well-versed in a lot of the, it seems like, modalities out there. And it seems like you're in a role of being able to help and mentor people. And I think in today's society, we've got a lot of hurt people out there. They may not want to admit it and they may want to keep it privately. But if, if your energy is very uh, uh, openness, you're definitely not judgmental. So I, I think that if, if people can be honest with yourself and just realize there are people out there that can help you without you, it costing you an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So go out. So for those people who are finding that, hey, there's some challenge or difficulty that they're experiencing in life to be honest about it and then seek some support. Whether sure. that's a coach, whether that's a class, whether that's an exercise or some sort of, yes. yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Tommy, what about for you? What, I, would, what I would do two things. One, just be with people in a way that you listen to yourself really connecting versus the role you play or they play. And what is the relationship? Is this truly authentic with me to them? Or is this, what is it? And see so if there's any space in there for you. Mm. And if, anything we did today resonated with you or even had a question on, I'd say, get back to Valerie and we can have that Andy Thomas show. Tom Andy. Thomas, get it? <laughs> we, can <take> <laughs> we can take all these questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. hmm. you may have just planted a seed there, Tommy. It there could be, it could be that there's some opportunity. Okay, so here's my, I'm going to add to what you just said, both of you. <laughs> is if anyone's been listening to this episode and has specific questions about life, about love, about anything, send me the questions and we might have an Andy Thomas, Andy Tommy <laughs> Q&A where you guys get questions from the audience that you can answer. How's that sound? That sounds pretty good. It works for me. I've never done that before here. So they, this might be a first. Ooh, okay. Go. Very cool. <laughs> I will definitely stay tuned and let me know. And I'll let you guys know what comes out of that. And um, there might be an opportunity for a little part two. There you Thank go. you, Tommy. Thank you, Valerie. Yes. Uh, maybe put your fist up here. Fist uh, or right elbow? So that we can, yeah. Oh, a little elbow bump. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you both so much. It's been such a treat to have this conversation. Again, I appreciate you both of your openness and your transparency and, and your willingness to, to receive from one another and from me. And for those of you who've tuned into this episode, again, thank you so much 
for doing so. Uh, again, this would not be possible if you weren't interested. If you actually it would be possible, never mind. I'll take that back. It, everything is possible, but a lot of it has so much, so much to do with the intention behind it. And so I, I hope that that came across from the conversation that you all witnessed with Andy and Tommy. Uh, be sure to favorite, like, subscribe, and and I'm going to be putting into the into the podcast notes all the resources that we mentioned so that you can look up site k you can look up landmark you can look up some of the books that we referenced um that way you can do some of that that pre-work for those of you that might be at and looking for some additional support andy tommy thank you once again for being on the podcast any final words i just want to give let's meet thank soon you. and um uh, in person and uh start the next thank you sir series of meetings <laughs> namaste Namaste. Very cool. The two of you hang out for just a second. Bye, everyone. Sure. Have a wonderful rest of the day. You've been listening to the podcast, Not Quite Strangers. Be sure to subscribe or follow on your favorite video or podcast platform. And for more information and content, go to notquitestrangers.com. See you next time. <laughs>